everyone, Alex Barandi here from the Barandi Group, welcoming you to our very first podcast, January 2021. Um, we figured uh, because we're doing our uh, annual market outlook, we wanted to do a podcast and bring in a special guest to help us get some insights and some um, information on that you guys can use on where you should buy and sell this year. So we're here with uh, fearless leader, broker of record, Conrad Zarini. Conrad, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I, I'm, I'm honored to be part of your uh, inaugural podcast. It's pretty amazing. So, uh, and try to make sense of this market because I know, um, I think a lot of consumers and people out there are trying to wonder what's happening, where are the trends and things like that. So anything I can help and uh, fill in some of those gaps, I'm glad to be here. That's awesome. And uh, definitely, you guys, um, stay tuned. Uh, we are going to be doing these once a month on different topics. So um, if, you guys, if there's something you want to hear, definitely uh, send us a DM on Instagram or Facebook or an email, and uh, we'll make sure we get all your topics covered. So um, I don't know, Connor, when I look at the year ahead, I don't know if you look in the rearview mirror to kind of do some predictions on where we think things are going to go based on history. Is that something that you kind of look at too or yeah I think that's a great uh, start off because a lot of people are thinking like how is this um, well crisis or situation that mm -hmm. we're in and can we draw on the past in terms of um, some some statistics in the past that really could reflect on what's going to happen now so I, I did do that I, I kind of um, one of the leading indicators that I always look at is what's called the uh, sales to new listings ratio Okay. Uh, and so what happens is with that, when there is um, under about, let's say 40, uh, when it's below 40%, so if um, let's say four properties in 10 uh, new listings are selling, okay. then we're, we're, we're probably in, um, we're in good territory where it's, it's more of a, a buyer's market. Uh, when we get over that 40 mark, we start to see a balanced market at about 50%. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets higher, like when 80% of the new listings are, are, are uh, uh, that their sales are um, to new listings, when it's at 80%, we're definitely into what's called a, uh, a seller's market, definitely. Right. So, so if, I look at, if I look at the two, uh, if, let's just go back to 2017, which was a pretty hot year. And again, it was a, a year where there was multiple offers and things mm -hmm. like that. Yep. Uh, what's interesting is that December of 2017, so I'm using 2017 comparing it to 2020, mm -hmm. um, very, similar, uh, very similar ratios. And what was interesting was both, both years had the December. Now, December was a record month. Um, I think our, like our company was up 44% in sales and uh, our trading area was up about 41% in sales. Wow. So it, it was a record month by all accounts. I, I broke all records uh, for December's. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting is we actually saw the sales actually outstrip uh, new listings in December of this year. Okay. So now we, we went... I don't even know what you call that when it's uh, 110 or 120. Say, so we're beyond like that 10 out of 10. We're like selling 12 out of 10 new listings. Exactly. Okay. So, and that has a whole ripple effect. So what happens is uh, there's another little number called um, end of month inventories. So what happened was there was listings already on the market plus the new listings. We were absorbing all the new listings plus the the, the inventory that already existed. So if you looked at Hamilton uh, on its own, Hamilton saw a 30, 32% decrease in end of month inventories. So that, that tells you what I was saying, that the, the actual sales were actually eating up all the new listings plus dipping into the, the existing inventories. And Burlington saw a little bit better where it was around 18% where uh, the end of month inventories were down about 18%. So a little bit better. Uh, mark, that market's a little... Um, I, I love talking about Hamilton Burlington because I call it the tale of the two cities. Mm -hmm. It's two completely different markets. That bridge uh, really makes a difference. So now, let's fast forward to what 2018 showed. Um, so 2018, January, then we started to see um, what was more of a still, a still a seller's market, but we started to see maybe closer at 60%, which was the um, sales to new listings. Okay. And ironically enough, and, and I know people don't believe this, but we're, we're at that point even in January 2020. So history does repeat itself. Okay. So w when you have this, that, this really robust uh, end of the year, and as a matter of fact, we had uh, over, uh, like, again, it, it, it appeared uh, even greater in the favor of sellers. So those sellers that sold their home in December did extremely, extremely well um, compared to uh, if they would have sold probably, let's say, in, in the midsummer. And um, which is great because I know it's inconvenient for people. But you're thinking because the inventory was so tight, right? That 
Yeah, and I think December. too that I think uh, you know as people saw those numbers. But again, what's interesting is this: that if you go back to 2017, of course we didn't have a pandemic. Nobody even knew what a pandemic was really at mm. that time. Uh, again, we just had a real big rush in the market in 2017, and the government uh, really tried to slow down the market. So I think what what with the similarity between the two times is. Um, the government was trying to slow down the market, so I think in December of 2017, people were trying to get in before what's called the, the stress test took place, uh, which mm -hmm. started early in 2018. So people were trying to get that in. Now, same thing happened in 2000 and, uh, 2020, mm -hmm. where people started to see the um, uh, pandemic numbers escalating. And I think people thought, I'm gonna jump into this before possibly, because there was rumors of a shutdown and yeah. all that kind of stuff as well. So I think people were jumping into the market uh, when they saw those numbers escalating. So these, you can, the, the tale of two, you know, one was a uh, government, yeah, one was a government yeah. imposed uh, crisis and this was uh, an actual uh, physical crisis. So very interesting. And then, so what, and I, and I want to jump to the Toronto market because this is kind of interesting sure. too. Because yeah. Toronto, um, Toronto, the, there's been this huge exodus out of the cities mm -hmm. um, the, and the downtown cores. And we've seen that and we've been, we've, uh, Burlington's been on the receiving end of it, and so is Hamilton. Hamilton, and, even, yeah, I was watching, uh, looking at some numbers for clients uh, the other day, and the sale prices that you see are, you know, it's funny that we never seem to be surprised by it, because it just seems to be breaking expectations, but and I always look at the cooperating sales agent. Who are the, who are the agents representing the buyers that are purchasing these listings? And almost every one that I looked at was a GTA-based agent. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of out-of-town buyers bringing their agents out of Toronto into Hamilton mm -hmm. to purchase the listing inventory in the last, I'd say, 30 days especially. Yeah, so what's happened, it's interesting. Now, um, uh, inventories of, of condos in Toronto have, have increased um, mm -hmm. over the last month uh, significantly. Uh, and condo sales have gone up 75% over December of 2019. So people are saying, well, wait a minute, there was a lull uh, mm -hmm. Well, th th there's two factors. Inventories in Toronto condos is up 172 yeah. percent. Now, what happened was a lot of uh, you know a lot of people are looking at selling their condos and, and, and exiting. As a matter of fact, uh, Toronto uh, had a net loss of 50, 000, over 50,000 people uh, left and migrated elsewhere outside of Toronto. Wow. Uh, Montreal saw the same thing. Uh, about 25,000. Uh, normally, um, there's uh, there's been a decline in, in, in Montreal as well. Uh, last year was about 11,000. This year was 25,000. Uh, I don't have the numbers for Toronto last year, the exodus, okay. uh, but uh, it's pretty significant uh, at, at 50,000 have left Toronto. So now, leaving a, 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 a wake behind them, and a lot of them were selling condos and things like that, so uh, that condo market has uh, really um, shifted so inventories are high so you have 172 percent more listings however in in december 75 percent more listings sold condo listings in toronto than they did back in 2019 showing you that people are now looking at okay the vaccine there's mm -hmm. optimism we're going to probably look back at uh you know i think people will come back to those higher density areas now that they feel uh, safe now as long as all the numbers and and vaccination numbers uh, keep track and people start to feel safe again i think mm -hmm. the story of 2020 was was feeling safe that's right and we did see that trickle down into the west end of hamilton uh, that condo market i remember we looked at the numbers back and i can't remember if it was september october and we had about 10 months supply of inventory of condos in the west end contributing to out of town um, investors buying up or having rental availability student rentals and just that fear of um, multi-family living in covid that's why the detached market really took off as people were trying to get away from living in close proximity to a lot of other people so we did see west hamilton I know downtown Burlington saw a bit of a dip in demand for condos. Um, but I, I, again, checking the numbers yesterday for the last 30 days, we have seen a little bit more of those sales start to pick up and the months of inventory starting to drop down. So you're right. I think with this uh, vaccine that's coming and people are seeing this, you know, or at least hoping for this return to normal uh, by end of summer when they expect most of the population to have the vaccine, um, I think people are going to have that renewed sense of, of comfort going to a, a multi-res uh, mm -hmm. lifestyle again. Do you see that as you know an opportunity, Conrad, for inventory um, or for first-time buyers? I think th these guys are the ones that are getting left in the dust as the prices keep uh, accelerating. That maybe these condos that you could purchase today at a little bit of a better price is that an opportunity for first-time buyers to 
maybe break into the market? Is that going to yeah, be a product? Yeah, and I think you know it's one of those things you know you know buy low, sell high kind of thing. I think uh, again, everybody's still looking in the Toronto market. When do we come back in? Uh, we're starting to see some movement in some of the what's called those micro units in Toronto. Mm -hmm. So. Look, I know a lot of people say to me, you know, why do you keep bringing up Toronto all the time? But Toronto sets the pace, and we're probably like maybe a month, two months, six months, three months out. We're starting to see activity in the micro units. Again, I think they've kind of finally hit um, a level of, um, you know, almost bottom, let's say. Yep. Uh, and I know a lot of investors are looking at that. The minute we open up immigration again, uh, you know, the government's talking about 410,000 uh, immigrants in the first year. Uh, once they open up immigration, that's that's significantly higher than mm -hmm. than we've seen. Um, uh, normally, it's around that 300 and change, so that's significantly higher. So they're looking at cap. They want to catch up with the the lost uh, 2020 uh, in terms of immigration. But people don't realize what a big impact no. that has on the housing Huge. market. You've touched on two things there, um, contributing to you know the demand that's that's really changing our market. Is that immigration piece? We've lost the immigrants coming in and you know so many go to Toronto but then we do also have that portion that go to the outskirts and Hamilton Burlington being one of those markets yeah but going back to I think your point is valid about the first time buyer uh, if, if you look at now there's a great product that uh, the Canadian Real Estate Association came out with and it's called the home price index and basically mm -hmm. it it starts to, to, to look at trend lines and and and, um, and it and it looks at the the, the type of home so it, it looks at apartments townhomes uh, two-story uh, single-family and one-story uh, single family and it kind of compares how each one of these um, um, types of homes is performing and what's interesting to see is yeah we've seen a leveling off there, there we, we, do, we did see a drop in terms of condos in, in Hamilton mm -hmm. uh, the condo market the, the, the apartment style which are which are primarily downtown so we did see a little dip and now we're starting to see a slight increase so now is a perfect opportunity to to jump into that market because we're seeing an increase now Burlington uh, saw a sharp dip in the fall in terms of apartment mm -hmm. uh, style, but now it is a very, very sharp increase right now. Like uh, it's staggering. Back with a vengeance. You're back yeah. with a vengeance. It totally is. Uh, and what's interesting is you're seeing the category that seems to be all over the map that's kind of leveling off, and I think it's because it got so high in price, um, is townhouses. Because I think people mm -hmm. started to look at, wait a minute, this townhouse, I can get a single family for X and a townhouse for Y. So we're seeing this bending of a curve and a flattening mm -hmm. uh, in townhouse category. I would say um, throughout uh, throughout the Hamilton Burlington, the only where we're seeing a sharp increase is Niagara, because again, Niagara, people are saying, you know, those townhouses are still, still great Affordable. value. Yeah. Now, Niagara, now the Niagara area I'm speaking, I'm not talking deep into the Niagara, I'm talking about your I'll, I'll probably go as far as Beamsville, um, yeah, Jordan, Grimsby, Grimsby, Lincoln. Grimsby, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Lincoln. Um, there's been a flattening of apartments in, in those areas. And okay. again, uh, because I think you're seeing people leapfrogging over Hamilton, coming from Toronto or Peel, leapfrogging over Hamilton and really loving that uh, detached market and embracing the detached. But again, we're starting to see that also leveling off in terms of uh, the condo market. So yeah, so we've got Hamilton and, and, and the Niagara area, the condo market kind of leveling off. A, a little bit with a slight increase in in in, uh, in Hamilton, but again, the, um, uh, the it's, it's really um, a sharp sharp uh, increase in Burlington, uh, quite dramatically. And then, and if we look at the last month increases, now if we look at apartment increases in the just in one month period, we've got Niagara. We've only seen a 0.2 percent increase in in um, in average price of a uh, of an apartment style. Uh, in Burlington, we've seen a whopping six percent in one month. Wow. So you see, it's back with a vengeance, uh, the, the, without without a doubt. And I think, look, I, I, Burlington is the poster child for what what people are looking for. I, I kind of call it a suburban urban. Um, you know, it's it's not high density, but it's 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 medium density. There's still a lot of um, different types of tenure. Uh, it's not as dense as downtown Toronto, obviously. It's not as dense as downtown Hamilton. It's got this really nice mix of tenure, and I think. Uh, people are looking for that walkability uh, and, and, and this whole suburban, urban kind of feel. And uh, people feel uh, feel safe in the density of Burlington. So sharp increase there. Mm -hmm. And Hamilton Apartments, we finally have seen an increase over the last month at a 1.1% increase. So now, if you're really thinking in terms of that, that condo market, it's probably time to, to, to start to look at that Hamilton condo market again very seriously. 
if you want to enter this market. Yeah, and like you said, really, I think people forget too that the, the urban living is appealing because of the amenities, and that's why I think Burlington has done so well. I live downtown Burlington, that's no secret. Um, and I think even having been to downtown Toronto in parts of the summer, and Hamilton and Burlington, it was almost like you wouldn't know that COVID existed in the summer in downtown Burlington mm -hmm. because of the amount of people outside on the waterfront you know, the ice cream, the restaurants, the coffee shops, that sort of thing, it has a real vibrancy. So I think people use those as kind of their their backyard when you're living in a, in a condo apartment. So if you're gonna be looking at those markets to break into, if you wanna see that long-term value, definitely look at where the buildings are located and if they're close to amenities. I think a condo building on the outskirts has less appeal and you'll see that increase probably stagnate over time. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, again, going back to Burlington, uh, condos were the top performer, uh, per, a percentage increase over two-story and one-story and, and, uh, and single family. So that's something to think about where, where when you go back to Hamilton again, um, condos were the lowest performer um, where we're seeing um, anything single family is, is uh, we're almost at 3% for one month. So again, if you want to get into that market, uh, with inventories the way they are, and if you want to get in any of these markets, you really got to look at it. I don't think a wait and see attitude um, is 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 here. I think we have to start to really uh, get in gear and look at it um, closely now, as soon as possible, because we could see a we could see a ten most most like uh, Canadian Real Estate Association, um, Remax uh, Canada, Rolla Page, all of them. They're all talking double digit increases by the end of the year. So it's yeah, I think to, about what they yeah. say, 50% of economists have retracted yeah. their yeah. Uh, 2021 predictions that they did last year. They were a little bit too pessimistic and, and they're expecting a sharp decline. And yeah. you know, who would have expected the market would have taken off as much as it did during the pandemic here, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, for you guys that, um, I mean, we're going to maybe launch a video on, on the podcast that we're doing now a little bit later, but for those that are listening and not watching, you guys got to see the amount of uh, paper that Conrad has in front of him. He's a stats junkie. Mm -hmm. um, so when we ask him for advice, it's not a uh, gut reaction. He really studies the numbers and the facts, and, and this is why he finds these little tidbits of information. So. Um, if any of you guys uh, ever want to reach out to him directly, um, it, like I said, the information, it, it comes from a real place of science and, and math. And so we thank you for bringing that in today, Connor. It's really, it's really neat to see all the stuff that he has in front of him. Um, but from kind of a uh, maybe non-stat related question. So um, like you kind of touch on what you just said there about the buyers. Um, I think last year were not the ones that sat on the fence and waited for the outcome. They were bullish. They were financially strong, job security. They really drove our market last year. It was kind of the, a called move up, move over, and the luxury buyers mm -hmm. um, really drove our market last year. Do you think we're going to see um, some of those guys that sat on the fence last year, you know, finally jump into the market this year? Who do we think is going to be really driving the market in 2021? Well, I think you're going to see the, yeah, you're right. I think that those three categories are pretty amazing categories. And, and let's even break them down a little further. And, and there were the people that were, and, and let's look at the phases of, of COVID. At the beginning, you had people that were in you know, on, on March 17th or 19th, when everything closed down, people were still in, 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 in transition. They probably sold their home or they were in the midst of buying it. So they, they really um, were, were made up April, the April market, which was a down, which we were down about 60%. Yeah. So that, the remnants of that. And I think once people got a little bit more confident, then you've got the people that reacted and said, wow, like this is, this is something, this is huge. And if, if, I, if I had a timeline of two years that I was gonna make a move yeah. or do something, I, I escalated it. Uh, much faster. Interesting thing happened at the end of the year. There was a, a home on, on North Shore uh, that um, was a kind of a fixer-upper, knockdown mm -hmm. kind of thing on the yep. water. Uh, the demographic there of the people looking at that property were in their 70s. Now you wow. say to yourself, like, uh, what, what is going on here? Um, well, people are saying, you know what? I am not going to wait anymore. Mm -hmm. um, um, those people that uh, at the upper end are saying, and that's why you saw a huge amount in the upper end move because people said, you know what? I'm not going to wait. I'm going to do something, you know, either for my family, for myself, for for whatever it might be. I'm going to make that 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 dive into the upper end. Uh, and again, we all know that the uh, homes have become your sanctuary. So um, those people that were sitting on the fence before. I decided I'm going to make the move, you know, to have some control in their lives. I think that that was that was key. Yeah. And then you had the people that started to work from home and uh, realized that wait a minute here, um, my whole um, life is shifting. I don't have to be downtown close to work anymore and that mm -hmm. type of thing. So you saw those people kind of wake up and um, and smell the coffee 
and, and make some, some dramatic moves. And that's that whole exodus you see from Toronto. Mm -hmm. Now we're, like again, I think if you're looking at what I just said about that upper end, I think yes, I think there's gonna be a lot of activity still in the upper end. Okay. Uh, I believe that. I think um, you've got the remnants of people that are saying, you know, they're finally saying, hey, wait a minute, this, um, this situation we're in, I, even though we see light at the end of the tunnel, um, you know, kind of, there's still uncertainty, but I, I'm, but I'm, I'm very positive, you know, very positively optimistic of what's going to happen in terms of our lifestyle and it changes. But again, we might, we might be uh, in this hybrid model till the fall. So people want to jump on um, their lives and, and the control of their lives. So mm -hmm. I think that's going to dominate. I think upper end is still going to dominate. We saw a lot of it absorbed in December. Yeah. So that's going to still be the, the story. Interestingly enough, what's, uh, um, we look at our search, and, and, and I saw commute. Uh, we have two buttons. One's commute, one's affordability. Um, I, affordability during deep into COVID was a, a, number, a button that everybody was pressing right away, uh, a lot of. And then all of a sudden, uh, commute, nobody did commute anymore. We are now Q, Q4. We saw commute Q's outstrip, yeah, it's outstrip, uh, mm. the, um, outstrip the, uh, the affordability. So now people are thinking, I'm wondering now, are they thinking, well, wait a minute, Maybe I am going to go back, go back in. To work, that work from home thing. Work from home. Maybe I'm going to. Maybe over. that hybrid model, two days at the office, three mm -hmm. is going to is coming, is is getting into the psyche of, of employers and the mm -hmm. psyche of employees. So back back to that commute button uh, is there. It, it's strong, but I did see a lot of a uh, lot of activity in that lower end. Uh, low, pr lower price points. We're seeing the most amount of um, views. Okay. on our website yeah. so um, uh, maybe they're not looking from an, uh, they're not pressing that affordability button but their their search is going towards affordability so I think maybe some of the uh, first-time buyers are starting to look mm -hmm. and come out uh, and say look maybe this this market um, is for me now and again we're starting to see uh, better ratios from sales to new listings and 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 hopefully we see more and more inventory coming into play and I think this is an opportunity for for that first time buyer to kind of enter that market and look at, again, some of the other things that they didn't look at, which was condos and things like that. So the, the market is, um, is efficient. I, I have to say, the real estate market is so efficient. It, there's ebbs and flows and, and there's, there's uh, uh, I hate to use winners and losers in terms of types of properties and areas, but I think what happens is people seem to follow that and look for opportunities. And I think if you, you know contact a professional realtor and I know uh, Alex is uh, one of our best people at our company. So again, you know, I, I, she, I know she digs deep into the stats and the numbers, and I think you really have to consult your realtor to find out where the trends are. And if your realtor can't tell you where there's some really um, spots of opportunity, then you better switch your realtor. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we try to look at it like an investment too. Like we say with these first-time buyers, like sometimes you have to adjust your your perspective for a minute. And I know everybody, you know, in their first house, they've got this, you know, ten-page wish list of everything they want it to be, but. If COVID's taught me anything, it's how fast a year can go by. So guys, maybe adjust it and look at it as an investment for the next 12 to 24 months and say, you know what, eventually we want to be in a detached house in Rosedale with a backyard and a pool. Mm -hmm. But if we sacrifice for the next 12 to 18 months and buy a condo that has been underperforming that we expect to bounce back in the next two years, we could make a lot more money and maybe that Rosedale dream becomes you know, a reality, but with a lot more equity in your bank behind you when you buy it instead of making it your first purchase. I think people just want to jump right to the, you know, what they want in the end, but I think they should use this time in the market. It's, it's really, it's not a long time to be able to appreciate that much more than you can save and ride the wave. Like I, I remember laughing at you in, in March and you were buying stocks when it was, you know, bottoming out. I'm like, Connor, like, what are you crazy? But you know, if had we seen that they were all going to come back and people were buying Royal Caribbean and Air Canada and you know, all these things that, you know, at the time didn't seem, you know, like a smart investment. This is maybe where people are looking at condos right now. And I think this is going to be the savior for first time buyers. Um, I do want to touch on what you said about inventory, Connor. Like, we've lost a lot of the inventory, and I don't think people realize when a GTA buyer comes into Hamilton and buys, they're not selling in our market. So they're eating up a property without adding yeah. one back into the market. Um, and then we've got first time buyers uh, doing that as well. How do we get inventory to the market again? Like, who's going to be dumping inventory? Like, are we going to see the seniors finally, you know, tapping out of, of the detached homes and bringing those to market and going into long term care? Is, where are we going to get this housing supply? Yeah, it seems to be a question on everybody's radar screen, especially in major cities. There is a shortage of housing. Yeah. Um, that's why I feel, um, you know, we're in an industry that 
you know, if you go back 10, 20, 30 years, uh, the economy really played um, a role and in interest rates. So the confidence yeah. of people and, and interest rates really, really fueled or, or, or um, depressed our market. I, I think uh, it's all about um, house, household creation. So what happens is this that um, we, we, we're missing the immigration factor, which yeah. is which when that comes, we're going we're gonna to need housing in a big way. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to need affordable housing. We're going to need all kinds of tenure. I think uh, we're starting to see it already, already in the rental market. Rental markets, especially suburban rentals, are growing and growing. Uh, rental rates are growing. Now, they're dropping in Toronto, but they're growing. Uh, rental rates are growing in, in the outskirts. I think that that's, uh, that's going to be a trend we're going to continue to see. Um, mm -hmm. I think you are, you are going to see people kind of saying, I'm cashing out. I, I, yeah. you know, some seniors decide to cash out, but they want to know that they have a great rental to live in. And mm -hmm. I think that's, that's, that's where you got to close the gap. And again, um, you know, there's, I, know there's, I know Alex is a, a big person about thinking two, you know, you know, two steps ahead um, and looking at, well, maybe let's look at some of these retirement homes and maybe an opportunity for, for people to downsize and things like that and, and, and enjoy this great strong market and, and cash out of the market. So where is the inventory going to come? Um, well, look, uh, right now we're, as of December, um, we barely have uh, three weeks, I would say two and a half weeks supply. That means if not another house goes for sale, we only have two weeks, two and a half weeks of properties for people to buy. Now, I don't have the, the January numbers. Um, it's, it's interesting to see the ratio in terms of the sales to new listings kind of getting a little bit more towards um, like 60%, which is good. Mm -hmm. But we have to build, I, I think people have to decide um, maybe this is the time they make the decision to downsize and things like that. I think a lot of people um, need to make those decisions and the market is pretty solid yeah. when it comes to that. I think, um, yeah, and you're right. We lose more inventory than gets put in because we're, you know, the market of people that, that move over markets been fueling this whole, whole economy. Now, mm -hmm. the other side of the coin too is uh, the domino effect. And I think people should be starting to look at a little bit further. Maybe they start to look, you know, uh, and there, that trend's already started. Your Brantford um, and your Niagara. Uh, Ni Niagara uh, months of supply is much better than it is here. So you'll find an, an opportunity to negotiate mm -hmm. uh, much better than you will in Hamilton and Burlington. So maybe people should be thinking about um, you know that you know going further uh, further away from these centers and and looking at their commute times and, and looking at their occupations and jobs and things like that I think that's that's where the opportunity lies in terms of um, better inventory and again like I said the condo market in Niagara right now is uh, a little soft I think this is an opportunity for downsizers maybe to to think about going into that condo, uh, cashing out of, this is a perfect opportunity where they can sell high and buy low. Mm -hmm. the, you know, you don't get that in a market. Um, that's where the really cool opportunity is in this market right now, where you can sell your single family, which is appreciating pretty dramatically and maybe downsize to a condo because condos are gonna be safe again. And uh, well, I, they're safe now. I'm not, I don't wanna, don't wanna say, I think people's mindset about vaccines and things like that where um, the density piece will not be a problem anymore uh, mm -hmm. in people's minds. So I think those are the opportunities. I think you got to look for those really keen opportunities in different markets because, and if you're looking to downsize, I think this is your opportunity to buy a condo at a, at a you know, at, a, at, at probably the best price it's going to be, uh, I, I would say in, in a decade without, without, without a doubt. Because any new condos getting built today, um, the, the cost of construction is um, growing uh, exorbitantly. So if you can get in, into an existing condo that's relatively new, a high, like an apartment style, mm -hmm. um, you will get a good deal and you, uh, you will appreciate naturally because with new, with, new, with new units coming on stream, the price of your unit will, um, will appreciate because there's no choice. N new units have to be at a certain level because cost of construction and land costs are so yeah, Which we've seen so rise high. dramatically over the past year. Dram oh, ter yeah, it's just been a, a huge effect on, on pricing as we go forward. You're right, we have seen uh, a few people, I've even talked to you, because we just did a, a rental for a client of ours, a detached uh, on the Stony Creek Mountain in a really popular neighborhood. And my phone hasn't stopped for probably the five days that we had it listed with applications and calls uh, to lease a detached. And we did get some people that said, you know what, we're, we're cash out of the market because we do feel that there might be a bit of a dip and we want to wait and see what happens. Even in that situation, as one of our clients, I can appreciate what they're trying to do 
But to exit the market completely, I think if you have a $750,000 detached and you want to you know, go into renting, that's fine. But maybe take three or 400000 and invest it in a market like Ni- Niagara. I think what Connor's saying is buy something, even if you rent that out, but to keep something in the market in an area that's going to appreciate, now you're lowering your housing costs and waiting for an opportunity to buy a detached, but you're also still probably going to make money in a market that is still going to appreciate. Not everything appreciates in a down market, but there are definitely pockets and opportunities. So I think, again, people have to keep looking at their home and that money as an investment and to pull something out completely or maybe to pull out some, wait it out, you know, a large chunk of it, but still, you know, invest a smaller portion. I think you're better set for the future and they have to really look at it like that. Yeah, and you're right. The, 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 the interesting thing, and let's talk about what's happening. Um, you know, everybody always wants to know what, what, are, what are the big buyers of real estate doing right now? And, and this is kind of fascinating. We've seen multi-unit residential. So these big, large real mm-hmm. estate investment trusts uh, buying multi-residential. Um, we, we probably saw in the last 180 days more sales in multi-unit residential than we've seen in the last two years. Yeah. Uh, and, that, and that's been that's been older older investors that own apartments that are selling to saying, you know, I want out of this. You know, this pandemic, I wasn't sure about rents and and and, and uh, evictions, and I it just got in over my head. So what's happened is a lot of the big guys and. You know, it's always like like you mentioned the stock market. Everybody says so. Oh well, you're a small investor. You're never going to make any money. And you know, by the time the big guys are doing something, it's too late, right? And you see those trends. Well, real estate's a little different. Um, and we've we've got something interesting happening right now. The big guys are definitely going into the multi-unit res, um, and we're seeing uh, retailers going into multi-unit res. So let's say large retail o- owners of plazas and and malls and things like that. Are looking at re, uh, redeploying some of their space and and building uh, multi-unit res uh, within the within the retail complex. They're all jumping in that now. Now is a perfect opportunity. You know, you can do that on a smaller scale. And again, what I was saying about that suburban rental, um, people should be really considering buying. Uh, maybe if you can, and it's very difficult to find small small apartment buildings. But even if you've got a uh, you know, again, I was mentioning townhouses are leveling off, a townhouse rental, a uh, single detached rental in Niagara, that type of thing. I think you'll you'll do extremely, extremely well from an investment standpoint because everybody's shifting towards um, towards uh, rental right now in, in a big way. So you, you've got to you got to jump on, on on the big guys because you can pivot faster, yeah. uh, you know, buying something that's built and on the ground and things like that. So that's that's a a tip for an investor right now in terms of building some equity in the in, where in you're the, going. Okay, awesome. I like that. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a <laughs> where do you think prices are going to go this year? I know, like I said, the economists are starting to uh, pull it back, and, and now they're saying maybe you know somewhere five to seven percent. We're going to see increases. I mean, our team's going bullish. We're going at least nine. I, I do believe that I know we're in a, a lockdown uh, now in January, um, but I do see coming out of this, we're going to see that robust. Summer again, I think once people get out and about, I think the, the demand for things um, for entertainment value, like we saw last year, the pools and the hot tubs and the backyard spaces yeah. and family spaces, I think those are going to um, come again with the people that are going to get off the fence and say, you know what, we missed out last year. Um, let's jump into it this year. I think that's going to take hold again. Maybe less home offices. I think those, those guys have made those moves, but I do think that, that home entertaining, bigger kitchens, if we're not eating out as much and you're cooking meals at home, um, we talk a lot about this on our blog this month. Um, so I think that's all going to impact, and I do think we are going to see the sales uh, and, and average prices uh, rise again. What do you think, Connor? What do you think is going to happen? Well, I think, as again, if there's those people that are sitting on the fence about downsizing and they start to see the market heat up again, they're going to probably want to jump in and, 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 and sell their home. Um, th- those people, the people that are kind of like the downsizer or, or, or go to a rental. So you'll see a lot of movement um, there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still very bullish on price. Uh, again, it goes back to the supply and demand, like my, your simple uh, uh, elementary economics, economics 101, uh, we've got a finite supply. Uh, there's five factors that affect supply of new, like new construction. Trades is one of them. We've, we've diminished the amount of trades, so a project, by the time a project gets constructed, it's probably six, seven months is added to the time. So again, those, that product's not entering the market quick enough. We got a green belt uh, again. Restricted development—that's uh, that's a huge part of it. Um, when immigration comes, we're going to start to see uh, more demand for for housing when mm-hmm. immigration opens yeah. up. 
uh, it's those kinds of factors that um, uh, interest rates are really great right now. But but this was not fueled by interest rates. It was fu fueled by, um, and it wasn't fueled by even uh, consumer confidence. I think it was just fueled by consumer um, need for, um, like again, going back to this mm -hmm. home being their sanctuary. And I think you're going to still see that remnant of uh, people looking for the backyards and the pools and the space and, and having... Um, Look, stay, I, I just wrote a blog re recently, staycay, the word staycation has been around for two, three years, mm -hmm. it's been a trend. The, the, the pandemic crisis just accelerated that trend, and I think we're going to see more of that. Um, Uber Eats and delivery of food, the, the, you know, these companies, uh, Skip the Dishes, have been around. Uh, they, they had their day now uh, in terms of success, because, but it, it was there, it, it's just a matter of time before it accelerated. So I think mm -hmm. people's, people's homes and their domain, I think they've, they've realized they can entertain at home and, and a lot of those, um, well, amenities, outside amenities failed uh, consumers in Toronto, mm -hmm. uh, millennials in, in Toronto, it, could, it kind of failed them because you know, they all got closed. But, but that's not the reason everybody moved out. Again, millennials are a huge part of the market, so they're big, big buyers. Now, when they start getting married uh, and they start having kids, they, they, the 400 square foot of the micro unit in downtown Toronto just doesn't work anymore. Right. Um, I think coupled with the fact that they don't have to commute to their offices as much, it just accelerated. But it was going to be a trend that was going to start to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. I think you were going to see people moving to the outskirts because you just... Follow the demographics, you know, the boomers, you know, we, when you follow the boomers of the 80s, 90s, you just had to know where the boomers move was going to be and that's, that's the market that was going to be hot. M millennials, it's, it's, it's life, like we're just living our lives and, and growing our families and these are just natural things that occurred. Uh, I think the pandemic just accelerated people making those decisions and I think you're going to see the same thing come in, in 2021 where people are going to say, you know what, this is the time I'm going to do this. I think. If anybody was sitting on the fence about what they were going to do, um, they were, you know, they're going to probably jump in and move into the market. Maybe they're going to look at cohabitation. I think that's an interesting phenomenon yeah. too. Um, I, I, I think that's that's part of it. I think maybe maybe you'll see uh, people, you know, great, you know, maybe senior with a younger person buying together or something yeah. along that line. You're going to see that. Uh, again, I don't know what trends we're going to see to retirement homes and long-term care. Uh, you know, they, they, they still have a lot to clean up there. So I think you're going to see um, things happening where, where, where uh, parents will move in with their yeah, kids. I, the think that's gonna, will, I think that's going to yeah. accelerate a lot. That whole in-law suite is going to be a big part of it. And uh, I think that's where people are going to jump to. And I think multi-generational multi buying, I think, will probably uh, come to the forefront in 2021 as well. And uh, yeah, and, and, and if... You know, I, I throw something out there. Like, if you had somebody that had a little micro unit in Toronto that was using it uh, uh, as a spot where they lived on the outskirts, and they, you know, when they were during, they worked in Toronto, and they that had that micro unit. Maybe you'll see micro units. Maybe people will share micro units, shared ownership of That's micro units in in Toronto, where they'll say, you know, three em three employees that work together say, hey, let's buy a Let's buy a condo together, and and you know we're all you know somebody's living in, in you know, uh, different parts of the the one the, in Barry, one in yeah, Burlington exactly, and, and then but they all have a needed. you know, and they can figure out a way to share their unit. Um, I think we're going to see a shift that way, yeah. uh, in terms of that. It's going to be convenience. I, look, like I said, the, the markets are efficient. I think consumers um, they, they they find the flow, mm -hmm. uh, and um, and and are very resilient and move move quite quickly. Uh, in terms of um, their desire. So again, I think we're, I, I think, you know, I always say that um, real estate's 99% emotion, 1% business. I, I'm i telling you, I, um, uh, you know, people do look at their investment and, and they want to make sure it's growing, but I think the actual trigger that made the decision was, was purely emotional. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that I was out, uh, yeah, the millennials may have thought I'm outgrowing my space, but I think everybody else that, that jumped into the market especially that upper end was very emotional and decided this is the time I'm going to, you know, do something for me and for my family and, and stuff like that. And you saw consumers buying and, and luxury goods uh, mm -hmm. through the roof and, and car buying too as well uh, right after the pandemic, right after the, the, the big closure in, in March and April. You saw a lot of consumers uh, buying. I, people are dying to get out to the retail again. Mm -hmm. People are dying to talk again. Um, we're seeing more people in our offices 
Uh, now again, we're, we're under a limited, um, but if I take the last quarter, mm -hmm. people coming to the office feeling safe, there, there was a lot, a lot more of that uh, that was happening. Now we're, we're in a bit of a transition now, but I think people really um, face to face uh, I think it's going to be something that's that's going to happen. That, We're all craving it. We miss it, and it's yeah, that, <laughs> it's yeah, coming back. Th that much more. And I'll tell you this: another little tidbit from my meeting this morning, which was a real eye opener. Um, we we monitor um, Google My Business mm. uh, a lot, and and our locations. We were uh, the amount of people that Googled our address in the Q in in Q four. We had 580 people Google our address, our office addresses. 583 people, off the charts. Wow! Like, and and and, and we never see that. Okay, never see that at all. Um, and I will say there was a lot of a lot of search was similar to what it was in December. We we had to go back to other Decembers and look at search, and search did drop off. I'm not I'm not. It's yeah. funny, sales were up, but search dropped off in December. Traditionally, like it always drops off. Yeah. Um, I think there was people in the market and they were just, they were there already, but yeah. new search, we, we didn't see like a lot of new entrants. We saw just existing search happening, but what's really funny was Q4 was that so many people, I, I can't remember the percentage it was up, but it was significant. The amount of people that Googled our address. So there is this desire again Come for face to face. So if I can use that trend, there's that face, face to face, face, belly to belly, nose yeah, to nose. Yeah, I, I think, and that's what this business is all about. I think you know we've we've outlived everything we can do from virtually to. Uh, um, We're over the Zoom Hangouts. We're yeah, over. <laughs> I, I I think so. Like the fact that people Google our address so many times was you know they Googled it to find our our address. Our buildings, yeah, our they're buildings. Coming in. They're coming in to meet people. So, so that's yeah. awesome. So really cool trend, I thought. Connor, this has been super helpful. I know I gained a lot of uh, insight and, uh, and you confirmed some things that we had projected that uh, we're gonna send out to our clients in our 2021 Market Trends Report uh, coming out next week. Is there anything that we didn't touch on that you wanted to add as a last thing? Or um, you know I'll never, uh, never let you get away without telling us what book you're reading right now because uh, Connor's like, you guys gotta see his bookshelf. It's, it's like a small Indigo's uh, storefront in his office. So he's always got something really cool uh, that he's picked up lately. So what are you, what are you looking at now? Well, you know, it's, 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 uh, I, you know, I, it's not new books so much. Now there is a bunch of new, I put out like, um, there's new publications that are coming out that are all, all about, which is interesting. By the time they come out, I think it's going to be too late. And there, and a lot of them <laughs> I've been researching are about, um, how to, how to operate in, in that past economy that we had and going forward. And there's a lot of people like that. You know, I, I'm going back to, some of the old books, uh, you know, I, there, I have an, an expression, you want to find something new, pick up an old book. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been just going back to the repertoire of what I, uh, I looked at. I, there's some, some great books about uh, influence that I've been looking at. Um, one I'm looking at right now, and it, it's, a, it's an old book too, and it's, it's called The uh, Checklist Manifesto, and it's just about creating systems and checklists mm -hmm. and things like that. I think it's time we go back and look at how we operate our businesses. And it's, it's an old book. It's not even, it's just, but there's so many things that, um, you know, January is a time uh, of reorganizing and organizing yourself. And I just, it's one of the best books I find for creating systems and checklists. And, and, and it, you know, I'm always searching for that better client experience. And uh, as I age, you kind of forget. And I think we need, we need these guidelines to help us um, uh, recreate uh, that client experience mm -hmm. and making sure that we're not missing anything. I, I just just hate to see things fall through the cracks, and um, that's that, yeah, that's been You're the right. book. And that's I, been hard with our with our electronic going everything electronically. Even the way we explain contracts these days and do meetings, we I do feel that the the client experience is suffering, and mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to getting them back into the office and to you know to re deliver that kind of you know, face to face and, and just created an overall better experience. So yeah. you're, you're bang on there. That's awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that on, I'm telling you, we, 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 some things we just miss in the online experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we just have to go back and, and re-inform clients and just make sure that we're covering all our bases because it is a fast moving market. I'm not, it you is. know, and I think <laughs> people have to be aware of, of everything. And, uh, and that's, yeah, that's really what I've, you know, we, Look, we can't, the excuse of COVID and all that kind of stuff, you know, it was in the past. I know people use it in their businesses. Now we're moving to a new environment, a new normal, and it's just a time to regroup and uh, really focus on making sure that our clients are the best informed and make these, you know, great 
decisions. Uh, you know, from a lifestyle, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big guy on uh, enjoyment and equity. I think those are the two major, mm -hmm. major things. Uh, you know, build equity and build enjoyment at the same time. We're in a, we're in a great industry and uh, we can help a lot of people, um, you know, make uh, those decisions that much better. And, uh, and when we need help ourselves. So I think it's just a time to regroup, rebirth, and, and look at how we generate business in the past and how we operated in the past. And, mm -hmm. and there's some great uh, new practices uh, that are coming into play that um, there's some, been some positives with COVID. And I think it's time to incorporate all that and, and really look at that in their business. Not, it's not uh, business as usual. It's just, uh, it's just, better, it's just better business. Better That's business. What it is. That's a good yeah. note to end on. Connor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, we'll see you next time. Great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Cheers.